Hi, first grade. Hello, first grade. This is Mrs. Kunda. And Mr. DeStefano. And we are here with a new Listen and Learn lesson. Today we're going to be learning what does a flag, a bell, and an eagle have in common. As always, we miss you so much, first grade. It is not the same teaching Listen and Learn without you. But we're glad you're here listening now. We certainly are. And in this unit, we are reading texts that are nonfiction. Nonfiction means it's real or it's not fake. So nonfiction texts teach, inform, and explain real things. Oftentimes, but not always, they have real pictures. Um, sometimes they don't. Like, for example, if you're reading a nonfiction text about someone who lived a long time ago, before there were cameras, there still might be illustrations or drawings, even though the text is nonfiction. Well, luckily today we're going to be seeing a lot of pictures um, of real things today. All right, it's now time to go over some vocabulary. So that first vocabulary word is bald eagle. So a bald eagle is the national bird of the United States. Um, and the sentence says the bald eagle is native to North America. That means the bald eagle can be found in North America. So our next word is Liberty Bell. The word Liberty itself means freedom. So the Liberty Bell is the bell that was rung uh, a long time ago to call people to meetings in Philadelphia. And it's also one of the symbols of the United States. You'll learn about what the word symbols means in a minute. Um, and our sentence says, you can recognize the Liberty Bell by the large crack down its side. All right, and our next word is the word seal. So a seal is not just an animal, because I know when I think of the word seal, I automatically think of an animal, but um, the word seal is also an official image or a mark. So um, the sentence says, we put a seal on envelopes so they know where they came from. So we'll learn today about um, a very special seal for the United States. And our last word is symbols. Symbols are images or objects that represent or stand for something else. So if you look at the picture, you see the letters there. The letters of the alphabet are symbols that, stands, that, that stand for the sounds we hear or the sounds we say when we speak. And as always, we have a journal response to go with today's reading. Today, we really want you to make sure you're paying attention and have those listening ears on because you're gonna pick one of the symbols that we learned about today. And then you're going to answer this question. What did you learn about this symbol? Now we want you to answer this in about three or four sentences. And um, we gave you in the red, a lovely sentence starter to help you out there. I learned and then explained to us, what did you learn about that symbol? I cannot wait to see what our first graders are gonna uh, tell us about. Me neither, and if they want to, they can illustrate or draw a picture of the symbol that they're writing about too. Yes, and you can send these to us on Class Dojo through the Messenger. Um, you can even type them out in the comments on Dojo or on YouTube. All right, so what do a flag, a bell, and an eagle have in common with each other? All three are symbols of the United States of America. A symbol is a sign that everybody recognizes that everybody recognizes and stands for something else. So when you see a flag, a bell and an eagle, you think of the United States because those are symbols of the United States. People see a symbol and know what it stands for. For example, does your school have a mascot, logo, or a banner? Something that makes you think of your school every time you see it? For example, our mascot is the Phoenix. Many sports teams have symbols. Can you think of any? We have symbols all around us. Before you even learn to read words, you probably learn to read symbols. Let's find out how a flag, a bell, and an eagle came to be symbols of or represent the United States of America. Wow, so we're learning about three different symbols of the United States, a flag, a bell, and an eagle. Mm, so that's one of the things that they can choose to, uh, in their journal response. You may already know a little bit about our flag from the legend of Betsy Ross. 
the flag with its circle of 13 stars was not the first flag to be, to be flown in America. During the early days of exploration, flags of many different countries were used to represent land claims. The first official flag of our nation, the United States, was flown on Independence Day, July 4th, 1776, and adopted a year later on June 14th, 1777. Do you know what the 13 stars and stripes stood for? They were symbols for the 13 colonies that became 13 states. Wow. So before the United States became a country, um, there were only 13 states, but they weren't called states back then, they were called colonies. And then when the United States became a country, the states, the 13 colonies became the 13 states. And that's what the, the seven uh, stripes, or the 13 stripes stand for. As the country grew, more states were added. With each new state, a new star was added to the flag. Pretty soon, there were too many stars to fit in a circle. So the patterns changed over the years. Now we have 50 states and 50 stars arranged in rows, still on a blue background, like the original flag. The same 13 and red and white stripes remain as reminders of the original 13 colonies. June 14th is National Flag Day in the United States, but our flag is flown every day all across America, from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean, as a symbol of the, uh, the, the land of freedom. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you look outside of H.W. Smith, you'll see um, on the flagpole, our flag is there. It's pretty easy to understand how the stars and stripes, or the flag, became a symbol for our nation. But what about a bell? The Liberty Bell, another well-known symbol, is actually older than the United States itself. In 1751, the mostly copper bell was made in Great Britain and shipped to Philadelphia, where it was rung to call people to meetings in the town square. I think it's important to recognize that back in that time period, people didn't have TVs or they couldn't call and say, hey, we have a meeting. Um, they would use the bell to get everyone all together. Good point, Mrs. Kunda, no alarm clocks either. Yeah, they didn't have any alarm clocks, so you were really dependent on that bell. According to the legend, the Liberty Bell may have been rung from the State House steeple after the Declaration of Independence was read on, in July of 1776, but we don't know for sure. During the American Revolution, the colonists feared that the British might melt down the bell for cannonballs. So it was moved and hidden in a, in a town north of Philadelphia until the war ended. Over the years, the, the bell cracked and was repaired several times. It was rung for the last time on George Washington's birthday in 1846 when it cracked beyond repair. That means they couldn't fix it anymore. Today, the bell sits outside Independence Hall in Philadelphia. It is only about three feet tall, but it weighs as much as a hippopotamus. Wow. If you visit the Liberty Bell, be sure to look for the words of freedom written on its side. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land and unto all the inhabitants thereof. So we have a flag and a bow. The third symbol is the bald eagle, a large bird of prey with a white head and tail found only in North America. Who, choose the Ameri who chose the American bald eagle as a symbol for our country? Well, to find out, we must return once more to our friends Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin. When the Second Continental Congress met and declared independence from Great Britain, they also decided that they needed an official seal. The um, founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, and John Adams met to design the seal. They talked about using an eagle on the seal, but Frank's, Franklin said, 
No, I don't agree. I think that a turkey would be a much better symbol of our country than an eagle. As there was not much time, the men only agreed on part of the seal that year. A statement that read E pluribus unum, which in Latin means out of many, one. They chose this saying because they were making one nation out of many separate states. It was not until six years later in, 1780, uh, in 1782 that the bald eagle, a symbol of long life, strength, and freedom, was officially added to the seal. On the seal, the eagle holds an olive branch for peace in one of its talons. In the other, it grips a bunch of 13 arrows, symbolizing the power of war. Covering its breast is a shield of red and white stripes, and around its head, a crest with 13 stars. If you look carefully, you might be able to see and read the words written on the scroll in its bill. E pluribus unum, one out of many, one. Now that you know what to look for, try being a symbol detective. As you go through your day, be on the lookout for flags, bells, and eagles, symbols of freedom and reminders of our country's founders who fought for our freedom long ago. All right, first grade, let's see what you remember from our lesson. Mr. Stefano, what's the flag, a bell, and an eagle all have in common? They are all symbols of the United States. So when we look at them, we, uh, we think of the United States, we think of our country. I'm wondering, Mr. Stefano, what was the main topic or main idea of this read aloud? So the main topic means, or the main idea means, what was it mostly about? It was mostly about how our nation has many symbols, including a flag, a bell, and an eagle. And it also talked about um, how those items, uh, or why those items are symbols of our nation and how they became symbols of our nation. So Mrs. Conda, what is this? This is our current American flag. Did the flag always look like this? Um, no. <laughs> How and why has our flag changed over the years? Well, um, it, it's added more stars because we've had more states that have been added. Um, and, you know, for example, it started out with 13 stars and now we're all the way up to 50 because we have 50 states. Mr. DeStefano, what is this? This is the Liberty Bell. It's another uh, symbol of freedom or another symbol of our country. Mrs. Kunda, what symbol is this? Oh, this is the bald eagle. Mr. Stefano, um, the turkey is a symbol of what um, of what important Amer of what important American holiday? Thanksgiving. <laughs> All right, first grade, that wraps up today's listen and learn lesson. Um, but we want to hop right back into today's journal response. So pick one of the symbols that we learned about today, and then we want you to tell us. What did you learn about this symbol? So remember the symbols were um, the American flag, the Liberty Bell, and the bald eagle. So tell us what did you learn about one of those symbols? And we gave you a lovely sentence starter down there in red. I learned. All right, first grade, we miss you so much and we cannot wait to hear your responses. Thank you for listening. Thank you, bye first grade. Bye first grade.